Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. I welcome you to this segment of Seeking the Mysteries of God. And my name is Alan Wagema. And what we are going to cover today is something that all of us are aware of. Is just to enlighten it, to highlight a few things so that we may not miss our hour of visitation. So blessed people, I welcome you to this segment of seeking the mysteries of God in the Word of God that you may know, that you may understand things concerning the Word of God. And the question which we are going to tackle today is this. Listen to this first. Many nations, many generations have been waiting for the coming of the Messiah. Many crops of the church have been waiting for the coming of the Messiah. If you were to go to your ancestral land, assuming that your grandparents are, are, are Christians, when you ask them, concerning the coming of Christ, the coming of the Messiah, they will tell you that they also have been waiting. When you see the lives of many powerful preachers who have come and have died already, they have been waiting for the same Messiah. This same gospel which we are preaching here today including the apostles themselves they waited for the coming of the messiah for the second coming of the messiah many years ago many generations have come and have passed waiting for this same messiah so the question is when is the messiah coming when is the messiah coming the bible speaks that nobody knows the day or the hour or the time but the Father God the Father not even the angels in heaven or the Messiah but only who? the Father but can we tell the season at which season the Messiah shall come? can we tell at which season the rapture shall happen? can we tell at which season that the Lord will come and establish his kingdom on the earth. Hallelujah. So the question which we are tackling here today is this. At what season is the Messiah coming? Is the Messiah coming in his second return? And we are going to read from three books. And we shall begin from the book of Matthew chapter 25. And when you read chapter 25 from verse 1 to verse 13, you are going to understand the season of the coming of the Messiah. It is highlighted there. And that is why I have decided to take you through it to the glory of God the Father. And when you read the book of Matthew chapter 25, blessed people, it speaks about the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. But there is something there. I just want to summarize it for you. It speaks about the five virgins who are wise and they had extra oil that was supposed to burn until the bridegroom was, until the bridegroom comes. It also speaks of the five foolish virgins who also had some oil, but their oil was not plentiful. But they also waiting were waiting for the coming of the bridegroom. Hallelujah. But listen to this now. From verse 10, it says this. While the foolish ones were on their way to get some oil, the groom arrived. The five who were ready went into the wedding and the doors were shut. The doors were closed. 
and it continues on and on and on blessed people wherever you're watching this from there is a message there and he says that while the foolish ones were going to get some oil the bridegroom came and the door was shut hallelujah there is a message concerning the hour or the season of the coming of Christ not the hour but the season rather the season can we tell which season the Messiah is coming and I want to highlight this very briefly because before I go to the main message listen to this now the Bible is written in such a manner that it will cut across all generations during the time of uh, Martin Luther King the Bible still applied during the time of um, Hitler the Bible still applied during the time of Daniel the scripture the scroll still applied during the time of the Messiah the scripture still applied the scrolls even during this time the Bible is still applying the Bible is written in such a manner that it will cut across all generations why is this the case so that it may keep the generations the nations always prepared always prepared because if you are to ask Daniel whether the scrolls were written about him about his time is going to tell you yes if Jesus if you would ask the people during the time of Christ whether the scrolls were written for them they would reply with a big yes and so what I'm trying to say is that the scriptures the holy scriptures were written in such a way that they cover us totally each generation each nation every year it cuts across all age groups all people all tribes all nations all generations whichever the timeline the Bible cuts across it and so back to this scripture of Matthew 25 we see the bridegroom coming and when you read other versions of this scripture the Bible speaks that at the midnight cry hallelujah at the midnight cry the bridegroom came and the door was shut I want to explain the point of the midnight because even as I'm reading from this version this version of the contemporary English version these people the virgins they had lampstands and the lampstands were to produce light in the night hallelujah they had lampstands and the oil was to fuel the lampstands but listen to this now the oil was very central in this but that is not what I'm covering today what I am covering today is the midnight hour in regard to these three scriptures which I am going to take you through the midnight hour which the Messiah comes because in other versions most of the versions they have put it so so beautifully it says at the midnight hour at the midnight cry at midnight the bridegroom came and the door was shut the doors were shut listen to listen to me now blessed people when we also read from the book of exodus chapter 11 verse 4 the bible says moses went to the king and said i have come to let you know what the lord is going to do about the midnight hour about midnight he says he will go through the land of egypt the lord god himself he will go through the land of egypt hallelujah at the midnight hour the lord is going to come and slaughter the firstborn children of egypt so blessed people in regards to covering the topic about the midnight hour i want you to understand this very clearly based on the question which i have asked at what season will the messiah come we cannot tell the time or the hour but we can tell the season of his coming even the messiah himself revealed to them the season of his coming hallelujah 
And so at the midnight hour, why did the bar does the Bible speak of the midnight hour? The midnight hour is the time of the night where darkness is thicker, much, much thicker. If we are to hold a meeting, blessed people, if we are to hold a meeting right here, and we would stay, for example, up to 11 p.m., when 11 p.m. or 12, p. Or 12 a.m. arrives, at the time, or the time that is around midnight, the darkness has covered the entire earth. Darkness has covered the earth, this part of earth which we are in. And when the darkness has covered, at that time is when the darkness is much thicker. Meaning that at this time, um, uh, mostly most of us uh, will start dozing off. Almost the midnight hour. At the midnight hour, many will start dozing off. Because the biological clock of God, which he has placed on our bodies, will tell us that now this is the time to sleep. Hallelujah. At the midnight hour. You see people starting to doze off around that time. And also, when we have read how the Lord Jehovah himself slaughtered the firstborns of Egypt, when did he come? At the midnight hour. So what is the season for the coming of God? What is the season for the coming of the Messiah? For the second return of the Messiah? At the midnight hour, where the darkness is much thicker, very thick, much, much thicker, that is the time at which the Lord comes, where wickedness has increased so, so much, where corruption has increased so, so much, where immorality has increased so, so much, where the devil would even have entered the church, would have entered the foolish church and sowed a seed of wickedness, where the devil would have entered the church and deceived the church. That is the season for the coming of Christ. And when we read the book of 2 Thessalonians, blessed people, 2 Thessalonians, from verse 2, chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 12. I am not going to read it, but you read it. You are going to understand that the Bible speaks about the Lord's return. And it speaks about the man of lawlessness. And the Bible speaks, and it says, that until the rebellion has occurred, until the rebellion has occurred, and the Antichrist revealed, at that time is when you will know that truly the Lord is on his way. Because the Bible speaks and he says, People from verse 3, people will rebel against God. Then before the Lord returns, the wicked one who is doomed to be destroyed will appear. The darkness which is spoken of, the midnight hour, which is spoken of here, the rebellion must first occur. Just as it was during the times of Noah, so shall it be at the time of the coming of the Messiah. And I bring this message with so much joy because this is an opportunity for you to hear the word and make a change, make a transition, transform. Because he says that at the midnight hour, I the Lord will come. When the darkness is much thicker, much, much thicker. Also, when we check the book of uh, Genesis, during the times of Noah, the darkness was so dense that the Lord regretted creating us. That the Lord Jehovah, the maker, he regretted creating us. 
there was so much violence, so much corruption. Some of the sons of God had already fallen and chosen for themselves those beautiful women and born sons who were referred to Nephilims. The darkness and the violence and the wickedness at that time was so much. The Lord decided, ah, this one, I just have to destroy them. But look at this now. At the midnight hour, when the bridegroom comes, according to Matthew 25, those who are ready are the ones who enter. Who enter on the inside part of that door. Because when you read that book of Matthew chapter 25, are you not astounded? Are you not are you not surprised when the Messiah answers, I don't even know you? From verse 12. But the bridegroom replied, I don't even know you. This is the same Christ, the same one who died for you, who gave you an opportunity to enter the kingdom of God, to enter the glorious city of Jerusalem. The same Christ who said that knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find. Ask and you will be answered. But now he's saying that I don't know you. Listen to me, blessed people. As it was during the times of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Messiah. These are the words of Christ. He was telling them the season, how to tell the season. Hallelujah. So even at this time, as we are going through these three chapters, as we have, gone, well, we have seen in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, uh, Exodus chapter 11, verse 4, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it speaks of one major theme, the coming of the Lord. And it speaks about the season of the coming of Christ at the midnight hour. And you see, the reason the Lord comes at the midnight hour, there are two things which we can get from there. First of all, darkness and wickedness will be so much unbearable darkness on the earth. Rebellion against the Lord. Number two, at that time, most of the church members, most of the believers might doze off as it is with the biological clock which the Lord has placed in us. Also is the spiritual clock of God. At this time, the church might get drowsy because the midnight hour is approaching. The church, which is supposed to be the authority of God, has allowed the devil to enter and sow a seed. He has sown the seed of prosperity in the church, the seed of corruption in the church, the seed of money, the love of money in the church. There is immorality in the church. There are all sorts of things in the church. The church might become drowsy. And that is why the Lord says, let's keep watch. Be watchful. Watch out. Because he comes at an hour when you least expect. So for those of you who are watching this and you are wondering, since many people have been waiting for the same Christ, when is he coming? How can we tell the season of his coming? He is coming at the midnight hour. A time when you least expect. A time where the earth, the entire earth would be so much corrupted with violence and murder and wickedness, homosexuality, everything now. Rebellion against their God. And I want to tell you this, blessed people, unless we are, we, are, we are ready, unless we keep watch, like these five white virgins, unless we follow their footsteps, 
we shall miss the kingdom of God. And that is why I'm saying we, not you, we. Even I, I have to watch my steps. Unless we are faithful in watching out for the season of the coming of Christ, we shall miss the kingdom of God. Are you also not, not do you know, when you read your Bible, don't you question some, you, don't you raise some alarms, some questions as you read it? For example, when you read the book of Matthew chapter 24 from verse 36, what would have happened if Christ had told the disciples, if Christ had told us his hour of return? For example, if he had said, uh, um, I would have come maybe 3,000 years later, or I would have come maybe uh, 2020, 2050, for example, what would have happened? People would have waited up to the very last minute to prepare. If the message is coming tomorrow, ah, uh, uh, I'm going to enjoy myself up to tomorrow, but then tomorrow at 12 a.m., I will repent and enter the kingdom of God. So there is also a warning for preparation. Preparation is key. We must prepare. Hallelujah. I believe I've tried to answer that question. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Shalom, shalom, shalom.